Um, we're joined by Miran Tumajan. Miran, thanks for coming. Miran's the Western Director of Armenian Assembly of America. We're going to discuss what the organization does later on. We're going to start off discussing um, uh, what's going on present day in Artsakh, Armenia, the involvement with Turkey, Azerbaijan, how all of this started, leading to what's going on today, and we're going to see, uh, and we're also going to discuss what uh, what this means for the future and how, what steps can be taken to get the resolution as quickly as possible. And before we jump into all that, I want to say thank you to everyone uh, across the country here, especially first and foremost, the people in Armenia and Artsakh that are, one, battling, uh, the men, women, children that are either battling, helping gathering supplies, helping organizational efforts to get everything that we can to help everyone out there, and then all of the people around the around the world, Armenian and especially non-Armenian too, thank you to everyone that's sharing information, sharing articles, uh, protesting peacefully, trying to get as much attention on this uh, on these attacks as possible so we can get um, as many people aware on what's ongoing now, how long these types of, frankly, these aggressions have been going on for some time now, and we're going to jump into all that right now. So, uh, Miran, again, thank you so much for joining us. It's an honor, Menwa. Thank you, thank you for having me. Of course. So let's start with very, very simply, what is Artsakh and uh, where is it as well? Artsakh is, is one of the 15 uh, provinces of historic Armenia. Uh, it is one of the uh, eastern uh, provinces of the Armenian Plateau or the Armenian Highlands. Um, Artsakh has, has been populated uh, by Armenians for millennia. Uh, it's it's the seat of uh, of Meliks princely families uh, of of Ar Armenians, um, and uh, it's a mountainous area for the most part. And uh, and Armenians uh, have lived in the, in these mountains in in, in mountainous Artsakh uh, for for several centuries. Uh, and um, it's they're they're native to the land. Uh, they know they know how to you know till the soil and and uh, and and y you know. Uh, use the land for their own benefit. They've been doing that for centuries. Um, and, and so what we're seeing today with the carnage uh, inflicted upon Artsakh uh, by uh, a trio of, of Azerbaijani, Turkish, and uh, jihadist mercenary forces, it's really heartbreaking uh, because, because it's happened time and time again uh, in history. Uh, where where uh, repressive uh, empires and regimes have tried to to take over this mountainous territory, which is filled with uh, beautiful flora and fauna, um, uh, and and they they haven't succeeded. Armenians have always defended that territory um, uh, because it's you know it's it's our Benoran. It's one of our uh, you know uh, natural natural uh, you know places uh, th where Armenians have, have lived for centuries uh, and will continue to live for centuries. I'm confident of that. Um, uh, right now, uh, you know, Ar Artsakh is, uh, is, is under heavy, heavy bombardment, indiscriminate bombardment by Azerbaijani uh, uh, forces. Um, it's, it's, it's so sad that uh, Stepanagert, which is a beautiful city, um, uh, beautifully designed, uh, is is now under ruin. Uh, it's 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 similar to Sarajevo, when Sarajevo was was bombed to smithereens, uh, roughly a quarter uh, of a century ago, uh, as as some of our viewers may remember. Um, it is it is it is almost unrecognizable the the amount of uh, of carnage that that uh, we see on a daily basis th over this past week, uh, and so, um, you know, we we need to get the word out. Uh, you know that that. Our people are under under siege. It's an existential threat that they face right now in Artsakh. It's not it's not just random uh, bombardment uh, every now and then. It's constant constant shelling with cluster munitions, which are which are uh, a violation of international law. Azer Azerbaijanis are using uh, these horrific cluster munitions, which which when impacted, they they uh, they create um, uh, basically uh, a rebound. Uh, of, of, of smaller uh, particles that, that are meant to, to injure uh, and kill uh, and, and go in different directions uh, upon impact. Uh, these cluster munitions, uh, you know, there's, there are international conventions, universal treaties uh, that ban 
cluster munitions. Azerbaijan, uh, interestingly enough, has not signed that treaty uh, and, and with impunity is now using those cluster munitions on civilians, but also on the soldiers. Um, uh, so it's, it's uh, you know, Park Hayat's Banakin, because they are uh, truly uh, the saviors right now of the Armenian nation. Um, it is amazing uh, what they are doing to hold, hold the line. They are defensive forces. The Armenian forces are defensive. Um, they're, they're trying to hold uh, the line at the line of contact, um, and uh, they're doing a, a remarkable job with much sacrifice of lives and limbs. Um, and so we could talk about that later, Menwa, about, about what we could do uh, to support uh, the Armenian uh, defense forces, to support our brothers and sisters who are on the front lines, who are also, um, uh, you know, in, in supportive ways, um, helping our brothers and sisters on the front lines. Uh, so, uh, so Artsakh, Artsakh I as I said, it is, it is, it is part of uh, historic Armenia, uh, and uh, it, you know, back back when Armenia, uh, f Western Armenia, faced genocide uh, at the hands of the Ottoman Turks, um, there there were wholesale massacres going on of Armenians uh, in the area in the region uh, around Artsakh. There were massacres happening to Armenians in Baku as well. Um, when Armenia and Azerbaijan and Georgia became independent, uh, short-lived in independence from 1918 to 1921, uh, Armenia was fighting for its, uh, for its existence, uh, the, the independent uh, nascent Republic of Armenia, and of course uh, the battles of Sardarabad, uh, Bash Abaran, and Gara Kilise, uh, literally saved saved what what was left uh, the one tenth of Armenia that was that was left um, but at the same time there were pitched battles going on in Artsakh uh, by Azerbaijani uh, uh, forces uh, working with and alongside the Ottomans um, and and they were they were trying to take over Artsakh and they they were not successful but in 1918 Armenians lost a lot of lives in the defense of in the defense of Artsakh um, and, and, and then that, unfortunately, was, was short-lived as, as the republics were, the independent republics, when the Soviet Union came about. Mm -hmm. And when uh, Lenin and Stalin decided to, to uh, uh, play, play the nationalities card with respect to the, uh, especially with respect to the, the, s the southern underbelly of, uh, of Soviet Russia and, and so the Caucasus region generally. And and the nationalities policy that that uh, that Stalin drew up was meant to uh, to to carve up uh, regions that were predominant of one of one nationality, one ethnicity, for example, to carve it up from the the so-called mothership, right? So in this case, to to instead of to you know uh, uh, uniting Artsakh with Armenia, as part of the Soviet Socialist Republic of Armenia, they they literally gifted Artsakh and the territory to Azerbaijan, um, as they did with Nakhichevan, the territory of, of, of Nakhichevan, also gifted to Azerbaijan. Um, when that happened, when 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 that transfer of, of t territories happened, Nakhichevan's population, uh, just to, to touch upon dem demography, was about 50% Armenian, 50% Tatar. Azerbaijani. Um, Artsakh's population was 95% Armenian and, and roughly 5% mix of ta Tatar, Kurd. Um, that, I mean, that is truly amazing that if you, if you look at, if you look at the demographics and what happened, what happened? The Armenians in Artsakh, they demanded from the Soviet authorities and eventually did receive uh, the autonomous oblast or autonomous region status. So it became known as the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast within the Soviet uh, uh, Socialist Republic of Azerbaijan. So they did get, get a level of autonomy, but the autonomy uh, did, did not prevent repression by the Soviet Azerbaijani authorities. And, and so in the Soviet era, the 70 years of, of communism, um, Azerbaijan implemented a, a nationalist chauvinist campaign of, of, of national, ethnic, religious, cultural, and economic discrimination 
aimed at eliminating not just the population, the Armenian population of Artsakh, but aimed at eliminating every trace of Armenian heritage uh, in Artsakh and in Nakhichevan. They were successful, unfortunately, in Nakhichevan of ridding the population during the so Soviet era um, of Armenians. By the time uh, independence, th uh, the recent uh, independence era rolled around in the early 90s, there were no Armenians left in Nakhichevan. And, and demographically, uh, Artsakh was also, um, uh, the, demog the demographic makeup of Artsakh changed in the Soviet era. So it went from 95% to about 75% roughly Armenian. Um, and, it, and it could have been much worse. It really could have. And uh, the Azerbaijanis saw an opportunity when Artsakh rightfully, uh, in, in, in 1990, uh, 1991, had a, a referendum, had a national legal, a legal national referendum, um, and, and voted to declare its independence. Uh, and that, that basically, the Declaration of Independence uh, in 1991, obviously ha it, it coincided with the dissolution of the Soviet Union itself, the establishment of independent republics, including the Independent Republic of Armenia. And the fervor at the time was Miyatsum, unity between Armenia and Artsakh. That was, that was the, uh, the, 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 the people's uh, aspiration, uh, both, both people in Artsakh, people in Armenia. But at, uh, at the end of the day, Artsakh leadership decided to hold this referendum and overwhelmingly people on the ground wanted independence and uh, and that's what triggered uh, a, a repressive uh, Azerbaijani government uh, to to start what what became known as uh, among Armenians as the war of liberation the war of liberation of Artsakh from 1991 to 1994 um, mind you uh, Menwa before the War of Liberation, uh, Armenians living in Azerbaijan proper, in Baku, in Sumgait, in Kirovabad, uh, uh, were, were, were facing all kinds of discrimination. And this was, hap this was rampant, uh, of course, during the Soviet era. And, and it came to uh, a, a, a zenith uh, with the 1988 Sumgait pogroms, and then followed by uh, the Kirovabad pogrom, and then also the Baku pogroms in 1990. Uh, and with these three pogroms, the, the Armenians in, in Azerbaijan proper uh, had no choice but to, to, to flee, to flee for safety. And so, so many of them uh, were forcibly expelled from their homes. Of course, there were the pogroms resulted in, in numerous uh, killings and, and woundings of Armenians. Uh, many fled to the uh, to uh, Russia, many fled to Armenia, uh, and, and other survivors of the pogroms uh, ended up, uh, through various charities, ended up here in the United States, in practically all states you can imagine, including North Dakota, uh, including Maine and uh, Hawaii, you, you name it, Armenians were settled, Armenian refugees from uh, Azerbaijan proper were settled all over and they're grateful. I, I, through my advocacy work, I'm in touch with many of them. I see them when I travel. Uh, I see them when we, you know, when, when in, in certain, in certain parts of the country here in the West, um, they're grateful for the opportunities that, that they're, uh, that they're given here in the U S but of course they miss their home. They miss their, uh, homeland and Artsakh is part of the homeland for them because because a lot of a lot of uh, the refugees, the Baku Sumgait refugees, their roots uh, go back to Artsakh. Their their forefathers lived in Artsakh, and then over time, due to work, some some of it uh, involving the oil and natural gas industry uh, in the late in the late nineteenth, early twentieth century, um, it dr it dr it drew them uh, to uh, to work in uh, in Baku. Uh, and and uh, and in the Apsharan Peninsula generally, so uh, that is that is sort of a, a historical backgrounder, uh, uh, and and you know if, if we if especially for those uh, who may not have been aware, uh, uh, you know I th I thought that have you know that primer uh, would would be would be important to, to at least provide some some, some context.
as to what we're going to talk about next. Absolutely. So let's let's unpack one part. So Azerbaijan has not been a country for a very long time. So how does a country as new as them have this ability? Let's this this ability to all of a sudden try and claim something like that. What what's the they're backed by something? How are they supported doing not doing all this? Well, you're right. I mean, I- you know, the Independent Republic of Az- Azerbaijan formed in 1918. That's that's when they they first uh, had statehood. Um, the the Azerbaijanis are are Turkic. Uh, they're a, t- a Turkic uh, uh, ethnic group, um, and and they're they're Shiite uh, Muslim. Although the Soviet era diluted uh, uh, not just in Azerbaijan but in many of the Soviet republics, it diluted the uh, uh, the power of faith uh, in in the various republics. Um, since the independent uh, independence in in the republics, uh, that has that has changed uh, uh, in Armenia. Uh, the the, uh, the mother church, the Armenian Apostolic Church, is is very very powerful, very um, uh, very welcoming uh, of of, of uh, faithful. And the same the same goes in Azerbaijan. Um, uh, where, where the, you know, uh, an adherence to faith uh, has has risen, but but it is fair to state that ethnicity trumps faith in in Azerbaijan. The uh, the 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 ethnic kinship that they have with Turkey trumps all else, and they and and the two leaders Erdogan and Aliyev have many t- many times uh, made it clear that th- that these are two states in one nation. That's how they regard themselves, and uh, and uh, you know they each each of them uh, each nation supports the other in in many different ways in international organizations, um, uh, you know economically certainly uh, with with the uh, the layout of, of various pipelines uh, emanating from the Caspian Sea, uh, you know taking the natural gas taking the oil. Um, from Azerbaijan through Georgia into Turkey, for example, and then fanning it out um, uh, either into into the into southern Europe, also fanning it out into uh, parts of the Middle East. So uh, Azerbaijan, despite being a relatively young nation, um, has been blessed with with uh, you know black gold, as as it's called, uh, with oil and natural gas. And uh, and the revenues that it has earned from it, uh, a lot of that has been used uh, to to create to uh, to boost their uh, defense industry and to purchase uh, lethal lethal weapon systems from countries countries like Russia, uh, and Russia is the main supplier of weapons to Armenia and to Azerbaijan, but also from Turkey, from brotherly Turkey, from Israel, and South Korea. Uh, and and other countries. Uh, so Azerbaijan has gone on a sp- on a spending on a spending spree uh, to purchase sophisticated weapons, um, and uh, you know sadly we're seeing the unleashing of these of these uh, awful awful lethal weapons on on Armenians soldiers and civilians alike. Um, and uh, I mean it's it's truly amazing how a nation of three million. If you combine Armenia and Artsakh, uh, and 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 you know how they are resisting, uh, 90 million, a combination of 90 million Azerbaijanis and Turks. I'm talking about the entire population statistics, roughly. Mm. Uh, but it's not even the comparison is is such a mismatch. It's 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 certainly a David versus Goliath battle, uh, and Armenians certainly being the Davids in this case. Um, um, trying to defend their homeland um, and doing it with honor and dignity. Um, so, so to answer your questions, you know, to your, your back to your original question, Azerbaijan has, has taken advantage, it's leveraged its oil wealth uh, in order to, uh, to gain power, to project power, um, and has teamed up with Turkey, uh, a neo-Ottoman expansionist Turkey, uh, which is also trying to project power in various parts of uh, uh, of its neighborhood, certainly its southern 
underbelly in Syria and Iraq. Uh, in Syria, it, it, it has uh, a deep incursion into sovereign Syrian territory. Uh, in Iraq, uh, it, it continues to, uh, to, to bomb uh, villages and, and, uh, and communities in the northern part, in the Kurdistan part of Iraq. Uh, and certainly, uh, it's projecting power now in Libya uh, by propping up uh, the, uh, the, the current Libyan government. Um, and, and it's certainly projecting power in the Eastern Mediterranean over energy resources, uh, uh, and, and, uh, al you know, almost had a serious dispute recently with Greece and, and Cyprus. Um, and so, you know, ba about a decade ago, uh, then Turkish foreign minister, uh, Davutoglu, Ahmed Davutoglu, you know, he, he, uh, was, was, uh, very confidently talking about, you know, Turkey, Turkey at peace with all its neighbors, uh, Turkey with no problems with, with any of its neighbors. Well, that isn't the case now, a decade later, where, you know, Turkey, the Turkish government, certainly has problems with practically every neighbor. Um, and it's, cre it's created those problems itself. And, and, uh, and it's created it because of, of this thirst for uh, uh, expansionism, ex uh, ex expanding the, the borders of Turkey, uh, and doing it with impunity, knowing that uh, here in the United States, uh, at least for the last four years, uh, there's more of an isolationist um, undertone in our foreign policy. Uh, so taking advantage of, of, that, of that lull uh, in U.S. foreign policy, the, the, the non-interventionist um, uh, you know, streak that, that U.S. foreign policy is, is currently uh, uh, in, uh, uh, and you know that could change certainly uh, over the next four years, but uh, but certainly the timing, the timing of this attack, of this coordinated, well-planned attack, um, uh, you know, is not uh, is not a coincidence. Um, knowing that here in the United States, all focus is on uh, the uh, the forthcoming elections. Knowing that Russia, uh, which has uh, you know tremendous leverage over uh, the region, the South Caucasus region. It's also overstretched in many ways. It's overstretched uh, by by having troops uh, in Syria, for example, uh, and and uh, and uh, at the invitation uh, of the Syrian government. Certainly, uh, it's overstretched by having uh, forces in in Belarus uh, for for the time being, um, and to prop up uh, Lukashenko, the di the dictator in, in Belarus. It's also you know it. it it had a it had a uh, a terrible uh, battle. Uh, it was supporting it was supporting uh, pro Russian forces in Ukraine, uh, not too long ago. So it, Russia Russia is in a is in a situation where um, it is it is trying to broker a, a, a an honorable peace in Syria, and uh, the United States has abdicated its role in Syria. We have and we've we've given our our uh, authority to Turkey. Uh, and, and so that's why we see, uh, for example, in Syria, the Astana process uh, of negotiations, which involve Russia, Turkey, and Iran. In Libya, you see a, a process of, of, uh, of uh, brokering uh, a settlement there that involves Turkey uh, uh, with the Libyan government. And then on the other, on the other side, the interlocutors are uh, Egypt um, and uh, the uh, uh, the opposition in Libya uh, and the United Arab Emirates. Um, so, and and that's so that's another negotiating process. And the Russians are involved in that as well. Are involved in Libya as well. Uh, and and so, very calcu in a vi calculating way, uh, Erdogan with Aliyev, they concocted this plan to open up a new front and test Russia, which has. Uh, has interests certainly in the South Caucasus region. Has always had interests, as as and uh, and you know its its number one ally, Russia's ally, is Armenia. There's no question about that. Um, and uh, and in in many ways, you know, Armenia has shown extreme loyalty uh, to Russia. Um, but you know, with a twist now with the Pashinyan administration, uh, the Pashinyan administration uh, refuses to have any kind of uh, vertical relationship with Russia, wants to, wants Russia to know that, you know, um, we, you know, we are allied, we are, we're partners, we're allies, but we want, 
We want, you know, hori a horizontal relationship, uh, despite the fact that, you know, geographically, dem demographically, there's, you know, uh, there's no comparison between the two. But Armenia, Armenia as a bulwark uh, uh, to Turkic expansionism uh, in Russia's southern underbelly to Islamic expansionism in Russia's underbelly plays a huge, huge role uh, and so should be taken seriously. Uh, as as a as a uh, as a ally and a partner as a as a as a co-equal in many ways and that's that's uh, that's the Pashinyan administration's uh, position towards Russia uh, but but uh, you know unfortunately unfortunately with you know we're now in the in the go going into the tenth day of the war um, you know Russia still has has yet to intervene um, uh, in a uh, in a forceful way, certainly, uh, and it could, it could, it could, you know, uh, pick up the phone, uh, talk, talk to Erdogan first and foremost, uh, and and put an end to this. Um, but but of course there 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 would have to be concessions, uh, and and Erdogan knows that, and and he will want concessions in other in other theaters, uh, including in Syria, and uh, and in Libya, and possibly even in the Eastern Mediterranean. So uh, and 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 Russia may not be ready uh, to concede anywhere, for that matter. So um, it is really you know geopolitically, uh, it's 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 really a tinderbox right now. What's happening in in Artsakh because uh, it c they could it could very well um, if it's not if it's not if the violence doesn't end soon, it could conflagrate it and and God forbid, but it could conflagrate into a, a wider regional war. Um, and we know we know that there are errant missiles, um, mainly fired by the Azerbaijanis, that are landing in, uh, in sovereign Iranian territory, um, and that and that has upset the Iranian government. And they have amassed troops on the border as well. Uh, so this this could really spiral out of control um, unless unless you know the 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 war uh, from above uh, is you know. There's an end. There's an end, and uh, and negotiations, uh, as difficult as they will be, uh, uh, after after this attack, this vicious attack by Azerbaijan, um, for perhaps a new framework of negotiations to be created. Um, certainly, the OSC Minsk group process uh, um, is is not satiated. Uh, there's still more that the Minsk group leadership, the United States, Russia, and France can and should do uh, to sponsor. And 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 uh, and bring the two sides together to sponsor, uh, uh, you know, uh, approaches to peace. Uh, and and and, but but it's it's really going to be difficult after this, uh, the indiscriminate bombings uh, that that the Azeris have done. I mean, laying waste to an Stepan Agir and Hadrut. Um, you know how how Armenians could sit at a negotiating table with the Azerbaijanis in the near future is beyond me. Um, uh, but but you know there seems to be certainly from from the French uh, there seems there seems to be more of a, a concerted effort uh, to halt uh, the uh, uh, the violence uh, and and I, I read uh, before just before our interview that uh, and and this this the source is uh, is not the government of Azerbaijan but it's the uh, the so-called uh, uh, Azerbaijani community of of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, they came out with a statement um, nullifying uh, France's right uh, to uh, to serve as an honest broker within the OSCE Minsk group process. Um, whether or not they're speaking on behalf of the Azerbaijani government um, is, is speculation right now. But the fact that 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 community made a statement publicly um, nullifying essentially France's leadership as an OSCE Minsk group paper. Uh, as a member, really, really uh, speaks speaks loudly, and uh, uh, frankly, you know, uh, uh, you know, France, France, I believe, and I, you know, is committed. The current government, the Macron government, and even the, the former prime minister um, uh, Francois Hollande uh, has come out very, very strongly, um, uh, you know, uh, defending the Armenians' right to exist, their right to exist on their on their. Uh, soil on their historical lands and uh, and present-day lands so um, you know that that that's probably what's upset 
uh, Azerbaijanis that uh, they see they see uh, perhaps a tinge of of, uh, of pro-Armenian uh, uh, sentiment in France, uh, but I I don't see it as pro-Armenian. I see it as pro pro-humanity, uh, and and it would be it would be ideal to see that kind of sentiment here in the United States by uh, uh, by you know the vast majority of members of Congress. Um, uh, and we'll we'll know about it tomorrow. Uh, certainly, uh, hopefully, there's going to be a vote on House Resolution 1165, uh, sponsored by Jackie Spear, uh, introduced by Jackie Spear, Congressman Spear. Uh, it has several co-sponsors, Republican and Democrat, and it essentially it, it condemns Azerbaijan's attacks and 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 Turkey's interference um, in uh, uh, in in the current uh, violence that that uh, uh, has befallen. Artsakh, and and so tomorrow they're back in session in Congress for one day, um, and uh, and we're hoping that there will be a vote and a favorable one for uh, for uh, the the basic human rights of the people of Artsakh. Um, so we're, we've been fighting for that uh, with uh, as an advocacy organization representative, the Armenian Assembly of America has been at the forefront of of educating people uh, on on what's going on, and and we have an action alert. Uh, on our website uh, to to get people to sign, uh, you know, to, to, to write to their members of Congress. Uh, the easiest way, actually, and I'll, I'll do a little a little uh, plug here for uh, for advocacy. The easiest way to do it is um, is to to simply uh, text the word passage to I believe it's eight two six six five, and I'll double check that right now, Menwa. But uh, the the word passage, P A S S A G E, um, to and I'll double check this. I should have probably written this down. I actually sent that. Let me see. Do you, uh, do you have it? I think it's eight two six six five, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if once you do that, a screen will come up. Uh, a new screen comes up, and uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. you text the word passage to five two eight eight six again five two eight eight six. I knew there were a lot of eights in there. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, here, yep. yeah. So once you do that, a screen will come up where you can s- quickly send an email to your uh, member of the house. You could tweet your member of the house mm-hmm. of representatives and ask them to to co-sponsor uh, House Resolution eleven sixty five. And you could also uh, uh, record a voicemail uh, on on the, on the voicemail system of your member of the House of Representatives. It, it's not too late to do it. You could do it tonight. And it's very quick. It's, I think, one or two minutes is about that. About took me, like, maybe not even that much time. It's very quick. Well, y- exactly. One or two minutes, and you could do all three. Yes. In, in literally yeah, one or two it minutes. Gives, in sequence, it gives you the option for all three. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, I can't stress it enough. Uh, we've, we've had, you know, uh, it, it's taken off like wildfi- wildfire. It, it's um, between that and, and the web version. Um, you're making a difference, uh, dear friends out there who are listening to us. Uh, keep it up. Share it with friends. Share it with non-Armenian friends. Um, you know, that's one way that they can get involved. I know a lot of non-Armenians are asking, what can we do, right? You know, how can we help? Um, you know, donating is, is, uh, to charities uh, is, is a good thing. Sp- uh, specifically, armeniafund.org uh, 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 forward slash donate. That's that's uh, the, the the charity that the Armenian government is is uh, is also promoting, um, and uh, you know you you could you could uh, you know uh, follow follow various demonstrations that uh, have been happening and will will continue to happen. There will be a demonstration this Sunday, October 11th, uh, starting at Pan Pacific Park uh, in Los Angeles, and uh, uh, and and walking from the park to Consulate uh, uh, General of Turkey on Wilshire Boulevard. Uh, that will ha- that will start at 3 p.m. at Pan Pacific Park, uh, and it's similar to uh, some of the m- the march and rallies that that uh, our community has done for April 24th for the Armenian Genocide Commemoration. Um, and uh, so we feel we feel that uh, you know it's important not just for Armenians but Tell tell your friends, your non-Armenian friends, to join to join us. Wear masks. Certainly, um, we'll try to keep the s- you know the distancing as best we can. Certainly, but but uh, but come out, 
join the Armenians in this in this uh, fight for the basic human rights of our of our brothers and sisters in in Artsakh. I want to go back to the resolution briefly. So, what exactly does that condemnation condemnation encapsulate? So, if this passes through, what's the? Can you delve into a little more? What exactly will happen? Right. So, so it it calls upon uh, the U, uh, the U.S. government to to reinstate Section 907 of the Freedom Support Act, um, which which uh, until until 9/11 um, had had broad bipartisan consensus and support. Um, it th- that act uh, prohibited the U.S. government from s- from offering non-humanitarian assistance to Azerbaijan until it lifted uh, its blockade of Armenia and Artsakh. Um, and like I said, until 9/11, everything everything was being followed letter of the law. When 9/11 came about, the Bush administration ended up weakening uh, the language to Section 907. Uh, because of its of its war effort in uh, in Afghanistan, and uh, and uh, Azerbaijan served as a as a uh, as an entrepot or basically a uh, uh, a, a way station uh, for aircraft, military aircraft on on their way to Afghanistan. So so certain uh, provisions in Section 907 were. Uh, mitigated, were reduced. Um, so, what we're saying is, let's reinstate it back to its original uh, uh, letter and spirit. So, since the change f- from 9/11, it's uh, stayed the same for 20 years since. Well, no. Since the change in 9/11, um, the U.S. government has started t- and 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 has provided both economic assistance and also. Uh, you know, alarmingly, military assistance to Azerbaijan. So they've used they've used the weakened uh, Section 907 language to uh, uh, to to provide uh, military assistance, which is uh, which is horrific because in fiscal year 2018 and fiscal year 2019, uh, which means in the years in actual years 2017 and 2018, uh, upwards of a 100 million dollars combined in those two fiscal years uh, ended up. Uh, uh, being allocated to uh, the Azerbaijani military from our Defense Department, and for what reason? Through through a loophole known as Section 333, uh, Building Partner Capacity Program, which is what it's known. Um, so, without congressional oversight, uh, DoD was able to to provide this this assistance, arguing, for the most part, arguing that it's it's for uh, training purposes uh, for the Caspian Sea Flotilla, Az- Azerbaijan's Caspian Sea Flotilla, its uh, its naval forces. That was the that was part of the argument. Uh, but we know from the April Four Day War in 2016 that um, uh, previous funding, uh, uh, military funding to Azerbaijan, um, uh, and this was mainly during the Obama administration, that funding to Azerbaijan was used for the training of of special forces, Azerbaijani special forces here at, at various forts in the United States, um, and and a lot of, and that training actually benefited uh, these these special forces to the extent that that they used uh, uh, the skills uh, that they learned here in the United States on Armenians uh, during the Four Day War. We know we know for, for a fact that certain um, uh, special forces who were killed. Uh, uh, during the four-day war, and and through their name tags, uh, we've discovered that that in fact these were people who benefited from the military assistance that the United States gave, and we've lodged complaints uh, to the government. Our friends in Congress, uh, the Congressional Armenian Caucus leadership, has lodged complaints uh, that uh, that such special forces uh, were able to receive training. Um, that's something that we're trying to prevent right now from happening again. Both the, mi- the assistance, the military assistance, uh, Congressman Pallone uh, has an amendment that was approved on the House side. It heads over to the Senate side right now, and basically it would, it would provide Congress some oversight over um, uh, the, the ability uh, that uh, the f- a future DOD, whether, whether it's uh, Trump administration or Biden administration, uh, would have um, uh, it, you know, in terms of in terms of allocating uh, continued military assistance through that Section 333 loophole, certainly 
we've, you know, our friends in Congress have put uh, this administration on notice that absolutely no more military funding ought to go to Azerbaijan uh, because of its uh, destructive uh, capabilities that we're seeing right now, certainly, we saw that we saw in Tavush in July 2020, um, that, uh, that they are, they are taking advantage of, uh, of that loophole. Um, now, having said that, uh, Azerbaijan still, uh, has access to lethal weapons. So it, it, in many ways, it can really care less about, you know, whether or not they're receiving military assistance from the United States, because, you know, they're spending billions of dollars on, on kamikaze drones from Israel, for example, five billion, upwards of five billion um, has been uh, has been verified, uh, corroborated uh, by various uh, media media organizations. You know, they're purchasing uh, these Bayraktar TB2 drones, um, lethal drones from from Turkey, uh, and of course today we we found out. Uh, a small success uh, that one of the critical com components in the uh, in the Bayraktar drone, which was supplied by uh, the Canadian uh, subsidiary of a U.S. company, um, L3 Harris Westcam. So a critical component that's that's part of the drone uh, will no longer be supplied by uh, the Canadian subsidiary. Uh, the Canadian government has came out with a statement and said that they're they're not going to allow the export permits. Uh, of this component uh, to the government of Turkey, so that that's a very positive development, and we we uh, I think Armenians certainly in Canada, but you know here in the U.S. across the world um, should thank the Canadian government Absolutely. for taking that step, and also uh, for serving <coughs> as a potential precedent uh, for for s other countries um, uh, whose industries provide components uh, 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 to to the Bayraktar uh, to to des desist. Uh, from from exporting uh, such components, uh, it's 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 uh, it's 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 really a deadly a deadly killer, um, and at the same time, you know the Armenian government, um, I know has 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 launched diplomatic protests uh, with respect to Israel uh, over the continued resupply of uh, of of of, uh, of strike drones uh, and and other. Uh, harmful uh, military material, such as the LoRa uh, quasi ballistic missile, uh, which which is being used uh, by the Azerbaijani government right now on civilian populations. It's a devastating uh, uh, ballistic type missile, um, and and so the Armenian government, um, uh, from from what I'm reading in, in uh, that's publicly disclosed, um, has called its ambassador back from Tel Aviv and has lodged a, a, a serious complaint, diplomatic complaint, about the continued sale uh, of, uh, of these, of these uh, deadly weapons to, uh, to Azerbaijan, uh, and that they've got to put an end to it um, right now. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's killing Armenian uh, civilians and soldiers, uh, and, uh, and, you know, it's, it's abominable coming from the, the progeny, the, right, the, the descendants of Holocaust survivors. It's it's abominable that that uh, that's happening right now, in the 21st century. So so. You know back you know back to your question. Um, I it's it, it it what's happening right now uh, is an existential fight that our brothers and sisters are facing, and uh, and we need to support them in every way, shape, uh, and and form possible, um, by way of donations through Armenia Fund. Uh, another uh, fund that uh, that I personally like and 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 promote is the Armenian Wounded Heroes Fund. They do a wonderful job uh, with the uh, the first aid backpacks that they've uh, that they've been able to uh, source and get to Armenia, thousands of them, um, and and those backpacks have saved lives and they've saved soldiers' lives. Uh, they extend uh, a, a wounded soldier's uh, ability to live for up to eight hours uh, until, until they get serious medical attention. So it's truly amazing work that, that, uh, that the founders of the Armenian Wounded Heroes Fund are doing, and, and God bless them. Um, you know, Armenia Fund, 40 million roughly from the, as of this morning, uh, upwards, you know, upwards of 40 million has already been donated, but a lot more uh, has to be done. Um, it's got to reach, you know, 100 million, hopefully soon. Uh, so uh, uh, if you're out there watching, listening, it's armeniafund.org, 
forward slash donate. Uh, it's, it's, going, it's going to Artsakh to help our soldiers, uh, medical relief, humanitarian relief. Certainly, um, you know, after the war is over uh, and, and, and God willing, um, there's going to be a lot of rebuilding to do, uh, infrastructural. Um, just just the, the level of devastation is, is incredible. So, but that's something to, to think about another day. Right now, we've got we've to help the, the wounded uh, the displaced um, uh, young children who've left who've left Artsakh and are, are now in Armenia. Although for in some cases their parents are still in Artsakh, um, so there's a lot there's a lot of hurt right now among Armenians, our, our brothers and sisters, and and we have to we have to step it up. And and some of the, you know s some some of the you know some of the stories that I'm hearing um, are so inspiring um, uh, of of. Uh, you know, we just heard today that Prime Minister Pashinyan's son um, has, uh, who who recently completed his service, his two-year uh, mandatory service, is heading back to the front. You know, uh, I'd like to see President Aliyev's uh, son, uh, and or any you know any leader, uh, you know, in, in Azerbaijan, to see if their sons uh, uh, will dare to to go to the front lines. Um, there is anecdotal evidence that and and uh, of minorities in Azerbaijan, the Talish, the Lesgin, the Avars, uh, being sent to the front lines. Um, we've seen videos of uh, of Talish uh, young men uh, protesting uh, uh, and having having knowledge of of of, of Talish um, uh, dead, uh, you know, Talish soldiers uh, in in the in the front lines. Um, coming back in body bags uh, a lot of them are protesting um and there's there's video evidence of that uh but that that is azerbaijan's policy you know take advantage of the jihadist mercenaries who are there throw them into the front lines they're certainly expendable right who care who cares about the jihadist mercenaries certainly um uh i mean we're even hearing that that uh many many of the deceased on the azerbaijani side you know are they're they're not even going after them uh, even even when there's a lull uh, in the uh, in, in, in the uh, the fire uh, the crossfire, they're not going back to retrieve uh, the bodies. Um, it just goes to show you uh, how how uh, minimal uh, and how irrelevant uh, the lives of, of some of these uh, some of these soldiers are uh, to the government of Azerbaijan. And certainly, uh, you know, I don't have I don't have direct evidence, but you know, certainly most of those are, are jihadist mercenaries and also representatives of minority communities in Azerbaijan um, uh, who are who are certainly at the front lines. So, so uh, you know, I'm I'm happy to you know discuss other other other, other questions that you have. I know uh, uh, we 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 discussed uh, quite a few uh, different different angles, uh, both to the war, certainly. Uh, uh, I, we talk about a little bit more about my organization, mm -hmm. um, but but I, I I defer to you, Menwa. Thank you, thank you. So one of the things I want to unpack from what you said earlier regarding the U S sending money to Azerbaijan, why would the what's the benefit or purpose of the United States sending money for Azerbaijan to be getting training? How what would, what's like the explanation on the U S end for that? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, again, since, since 9-11, um, Azerbaijan has, has placed itself uh, a, a, in, a, in a very strategic crossroads uh, for, for, the, for the United States uh, 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 war in Afghanistan, hmm. for example. Um, it, it, it's been, it's, they, they've been able to take advantage of the oil wealth um, uh, and, and, and leverage, leverage that wealth and the revenues in that wealth to... Uh, um, to b to build relationships here uh, in the United States um, through lo through heavy lobbying through you know they they uh, they've retained lobbyists um, uh, for a few hundred thousand dollars a year uh, for several years uh, and and they've had some of them have uh, been affiliated with the uh, Azerbaijani embassy in Washington D.C. Um, uh, so so uh, the lobbyists are, are are working directly with. Uh, the embassy 
in some cases, uh, they were individual Azerbaijanis, wealthy Azerbaijanis who, who uh, ended up uh, 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 retaining lobbyists uh, until a certain date, for example. But, but you know, each step of the way, uh, you know, the lobbyists, the pro-Azerbaijani lobbyists are very active, very active in Washington, D.C., trying to negate, um, you know, any advancement uh, of the Armenian cause, um, and not just on not just on uh, Nagorno-Karabakh Artsakh-related issues. Uh, they've they've tried to uh, you know uh, uh, you know try to stop the Armenian Genocide Resolution, for example, from advancing, um, and 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 continue to do so in tandem with with the uh, lobbyists uh, that the Turkish government had retained and continues to retain. They tried that last October. Um, October 29th on the House side uh, and, and then in, in December on the Senate side. They certainly failed um, because we know what happened uh, on both days with respect to the resolution, the overwhelming passage on the House side and the unanimous passage on the Senate side. But they fought, they fought very, very hard, um, both, both, both lobbies. Um, and in this case, you know, there's, there's a, a constant uh, effort by the Azerbaijani lobbyists to equivocate to basically to to s to send this this false equ equ equivocation uh, messaging to the media that that uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan are allegedly the same uh, that Armenia is as as responsible for violence and carnage as Azerbaijan that's that's you know in 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 Nagorno Karabakh that is the mantra that are, you know Armenians are the initiators of attacks which is you know, nothing can be further from the truth. Armenians are always hunkered down in a def defensive position and are, are retaliating uh, to Azerbaijani attacks. And we saw that in Tavush um, with, the, uh, with the incursion into the no man's land, uh, which, which sparked a, a retaliation from Armenian forces. And then, and then the flare up began in Tavush um, and then back in July. It's always been this way. You know, they, they, uh, they, they initiate, uh, you know, attacks in various directions and then, you know, and then blame the Armenians um, without evidence. And, and, and uh, it's, 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 it's too bad, really, that uh, the Royce Engel initiative uh, back in 2015 uh, did not come to fruition. And that's Congressman uh, Royce, who's now retired, and Congressman Engel, Elliot Engel, they were the, respectively, the chairman and the ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee they tried to get this this uh, initiative uh, approved in the House. They did. They did get many co-sponsors, well over 80 co-sponsors. Um, the Royce Engel Initiative called for uh, uh, an, an end to the the sniping that was happening at the at the uh, line of contact, um, uh, in especially uh, in Nagorno Karabakh. It was they were calling for gunfire locator systems and and. Uh, and and sound uh, enhancers to be placed uh, at the at the line of contact, so um, it would be uh, easy to uh, determine who was initiating fire um, at any given moment. Um, and then the, the the third component was beefing up the OSC uh, Mintz Group Observer Force, uh, um, uh, which which was woefully under under manned at the time uh, and still is uh and, and and certainly in the COVID era there's there's no uh there's no observer force anymore on the ground and that was part of the calculus i'm sure um that azerbaijan and turkey uh both uh, uh took took advantage of when they when they planned uh, both the july attack in tabush and also uh, uh this past week's uh uh devastating attacks on on artsakh so um so back to the Royce Engel initiative, it's unfortunate because, because that was tr truly a, a pro-peace initiative um, that, uh, that could have done a lot of good uh, for both sides. Um, but uh, we, we the, the, at the time, the Obama administration didn't have the political will uh, to, to, to push this through um, to, get, to get the OSC Mintz Group, uh, their partners uh, in the Mintz Group process to, uh, to uh, also see the benefit of this. Uh, and, and uh, you know, it's these are these things are sort of confidence building measures. At the same time, the Azerbaijani government fought fought that hard. They fought the uh, Royce Engel initiative. Their lobbyists fought it. They certainly didn't want it. 
they want to they want to keep everything as as uh, blurry and and obfuscate uh, what's really happening as much as possible. They they are uh, you know in no way, shape, or form do they want any any type of gunfire locator system or 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 sound enhancing mechanism um, because that that would be deleterious to you know their overall aim, which is which is you know terrorizing the Armenian population, um, which is what they're doing right now with the indiscriminate bombing. The other thing you mentioned earlier, <coughs> so we said Russia was kind of spread out, spread thin on their resources are kind of in different buckets, whereas, again, we, which we touched on, Azerbaijan is directly backed by Turkey. So is there, n- there's no one true nation that has that same, that Armenia can kind of lean back on the same way that Azerbaijan can with Turkey. Is that correct? I think that's fair to say. I think, I think Russia in many ways wants to, to keep a balanced relationship between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Um, certainly uh, there's, there's uh, economic uh, reasons and, and certainly uh, military industrial uh, uh, reasons for, for wanting to do so. Uh, Russia, Russia sells, uh, uh, you know, sophisticated weapons uh, to both uh, uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia. Um, and certainly the, the latest, the latest, uh, uh, the latest types of weaponry, right? The latest models are, are usually uh, sold to Azerbaijan because they can afford it. They can, it's, you know, uh, through the uh, oil and natural gas revenue that they, that they're generating. In Armenia's case, uh, uh, the weaponry is also sophisticated, not not necessarily as as modern as what Azerbaijan has uh, in in some respects, but um, Russia Russia certainly has um, economic and and defense uh, uh, incentives to, uh, to 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 keep to keep both countries as as client states in many ways. Um, s- but yeah, you're right. You're right, Menwa. Uh, Turkey is one-sidedly, uh, openly, blatantly in, in favor of. Uh, of Azerbaijan uh, and uh, and the policies that uh, you know that Azerbaijan has has uh, conducted the uh, uh, refusal to uh, to uh, you know to, to accept confidence building measures uh, through the OSC Minsk Group process for several years, um, even even the uh, the notion of having uh, representatives of of uh, Artsakh at the negotiating table, which which would be a no brainer in in most conflicts, you know. The uh, you know the the population that is being brutalized, victimized, right, d- does have a seat at the negotiating table. That is the case uh, in most conflicts around the world. Not the case in in uh, in Artsakh, where since 1997 Armenia has uh, has has basically uh, uh, taken over um, uh, Artsakh's uh, uh, seat as well at the table. They used to have a seat uh, since the 1994 ceasefire. Uh, and Armenia also had its own seat at the time, uh, but that's you know, th- for 23 years Ar- Artsakh uh, does not have a seat at the table, and that's that's problematic in many ways because uh, um, it it has a self-governing, uh, you know, democratic uh, uh, administration. Uh, there's been uh, you know uh, many elections over the years, uh, and and a, and a peaceful transfer of power uh, from from one administration to another uh it's a it's a budding democracy um it it has uh you know a, a very uh well-crafted constitution uh and uh and and you know we're talking about the basic uh rights to life liberty the pursuit of happiness which the people of Artsakh have coveted and and have cherished for many years um and 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 now it's in jeopardy the basic rights to life liberty and and dignity are now in jeopardy um with 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 the terror campaign that Arts- uh, that Artsakh is is facing right now and uh you know we we certainly uh we have to we have to step up I- and and educate the international community uh to recognize i i firmly believe now's the time to recognize Artsakh's independence and now that you know it's in its in its in a crucial hour um we look we've recognized east timor uh we recognized kosovo we recognized south sudan when when each of them were uh undergoing tremendous tremendous odds um uh 
when their backs were against the wall. Certainly in Kosovo, the United States was, you know, heavily in favor of Kosovo's independence. Um, but, but irrespective, you know, our, the, the people of Artsakh over the last 25 years have shown that they can self-govern, um, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a very, uh, you know, dignified way. And that, that should be that. And plus what they're facing right now, the existential threats, uh, should be enough for certain governments around the world, uh, to, to, uh, you know, make that brave, uh, you know, decision to uh, to welcome Artsakh into the uh, the family of nations. Uh, now's the time to do it. Uh, we just need a few brave brave countries to do it. Once once you get a few, um, and certainly Armenia, uh, you know, is 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 likely on the verge of, of recognizing. I mean, it, uh, there's doesn't leave Armenia much room any longer. It's it's uh, it hasn't recognized Artsakh's independence, um, but. Uh, with the way things are going, uh, it, it certainly may have to, in concert, hopefully, with, with some other countries. Absolutely. Uh, two more things on Russia. So one of, one of the other things you said was the, the Pashinyan administration's position on the relationship with Russia is one that they want to be of horizontal versus vertical. Do you think that stance possibly also plays into russia's lack of intervention currently or is it strictly just their facilitation between the two on the weapons front yeah i think i think you know that argument um is valid that uh, the notion that um you know the you know you had an organic uh democratic revolution a democratic transformation in armenia back in 2018 um that that model is not one that that uh, that Moscow uh, usually uh, uh, values, right? Certainly not not in their own <laughs> country, and certainly uh, um, you know makes efforts to to prevent that from happening, as we see in Belarus right now. Um, despite the uh, the fervor of, of a wide scale of of, of, of the re the population in in Belarus, you know, trying to prevent that trying to prevent that democratic uh, uh, transformation in that country. We see, we, we see it in, you know, in other countries as well where Russia has, has uh, you know, influence. Um, uh, at the same time, you know, uh, uh, you know our media uh, has made it clear that, you know, the, the new administration has made it clear that, you know, th they're not, they're not in, th in the mindset of changing for their foreign policy orientation. They made that abundantly clear when they came to power that uh, that their focus would be on on domestic reforms, on uh, on shoring up uh, democratic institutions in the country, on uh, on on uh, you know going after corrupt activities uh, by by uh, oligarchs, by by uh, entities that had monopolies of of, of certain um, uh, imports, for example, um, certain industries. And they've done a pretty good job in, in breaking up monopolies, in, in uh, minimizing uh, corrupt activities, uh, among, not just among oligarchs, but also within, uh, within the government apparatus as well. Um, they've, they've had less of a success on the judicial front, certainly, uh, and some of that may be attributable to the fact that, uh, that the process for reform in ju judiciary didn't happen uh, when, when, you know, when the movement uh, and ended up uh, taking over the reins of, of, of governance. Uh, it, it is, I think it's, and some analysts have, have talked about, you know, the, the notion that, you know, had that happened early on, uh, judicial reforms early on, that, that uh, there was a groundswell of support um, uh, among, the, among the populace uh, uh, at the time. Now, it's, it's uh, certainly now in the, in the war, uh, in the war era, that's not even, uh, that's a non-starter. I mean, that everything else is secondary now. Uh, the country is unified, certainly. Um, uh, the political factions in parliament, um, you know, there was a lot of griping going on at one time, but certainly uh, every, everyone is unified now. Uh, and, uh, and they have to be, they have to be, because uh, uh, there's so much at stake. 
in, in Artsakh and also in Armenia. Um, Armenia has also been attacked, as we know, in the Vartenis region. Um, uh, you know, two people have died and, and there have been several wounded uh, in Gerakuni province. And we saw what happened in Tavush province as well back in July. So there's, there's cause for concern in, in Arme Armenia as well for its own security. Um, so, yeah, uh, to, your, to your point about, you know, Russia and, and its attitude, I think, uh, I think it's non-intervention. It's non, you know, it's, it's uh, part of it has probably has to do with the fact, and this is, you know, this is my opinion, uh, but uh, the way I, you know, the way I'm seeing it, uh, short of Pashinyan, uh, you know, sort of uh, begging, for lack of a better word, or supplicating, right, for intervention, um, Russia will be hard-pressed to, you know, to intervene. That may change, though, if Armenia proper is, is, uh, is attacked uh, because of the treat treaty relationship that they have. And, if, and if, uh, certainly if Turkey is also involved in potential attacks on Armenia proper, that, that, that would be a game-changer. Um, that, could, that could precipitate not just Russia, but the CSTO, you know, um, which we'll have, to, we'll have to see how much, how much muscle it has thus far. It hasn't, uh, hasn't really, uh, shown, shown, uh, shown much, much of its muscle. Um, but, uh, th yeah, there, there are certain red lines that, uh, that haven't been crossed, uh, but th should they be crossed, it would, it would certainly precipitate, uh, intervention by Russia. So in defense of Armenia. Well, I can understand those red lines being crossed as what could possibly be the tipping point of seeing Russia uh, start to get themselves involved. Isn't it a bit bizarre that a nation that's considered an ally like Russia, though, is supplementing a country that has has, has had a long, long time have had strained relation with Armenia even prior to the actual attacks that have just began? Isn't it a bit strange? To have an ally supplying them with weaponry, so granted they're supplying you too, but you're facilitating both sides of it, and now those what part of those weapons are now being used against you and Artsakh. How can I don't yeah. know if it's a dicey question, but how's that relationship s still considered an ally uh, if that's what's being uh, if that's what's happening? Yeah, and and fair point. I mean, uh, you know, Azerbaijan has has access to and 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 certainly. Uh, uh, taken advantage of its access to, to, uh, weapon systems, ballistic missiles, uh, uh, ver various types of, uh, of rocketry, rockets, uh, um, uh, drones, certainly from other countries, uh, South Korea, mm -hmm. uh, Turkey, Israel, um, Ukraine in the back in the day. So it's not, you know, they, they can certainly, uh, uh, sort of, sort of minimize if they, if they want to, um, their, you know, the, the acquisition of weapons from Russia, but I think it's in their advantage to, uh, uh, to show, to show Moscow that, you know, it's, it's, uh, it also, uh, you know, should be taken seriously, uh, uh, that the economic, uh, and military industrial, uh, calculus, uh, you know, uh, for them, uh, trumps, uh, any type of, uh, you know, humanitarian or, uh, you know, uh, historical relationship that Russia has and values with Armenia, um, but, or, or in strategic relationship for that matter, Russia's, Russia's strategic relations with Armenia are, are important for Russia, um, uh, certainly important for, for Armenia as well from a security standpoint. Um, but, uh, but, you know, op you know, there are, there are, there are influencers in, in Russian military as, as well. Uh, uh, and there was a, there was an article recently this past week by a Colonel, Colonel, uh, Julin, uh, who gave an interview, um, uh, uh, to Russian television and, uh, sort of prodding, uh, fellow members of the military that look, war has begun right in our, in, in Nagorno-Karabakh and, um, you know, don't, don't think that this is, you know, according to this Colonel Julian, don't think that this was just a reckless rash, uh, move by Erdogan, 
um, uh, working, you know, in concert with Aliyev, that this was this is part and parcel of, uh, uh, you know, Erdogan's uh, designs and plans for expansionism, uh, for pan-Turkism, and that now's the time. Like, you know, I- you know, if we if we if we're he said if we're patting ourselves on the back for for uh, for selling the S four hundred anti-missile systems to to Turkey, uh, and that somehow that that you know that is. Uh, a, a harbinger for you know closer relations between the two countries he's saying don't kid yourselves uh you know comrades you know fellow leaders don't kid yourselves because um uh he's he is by design he is he is getting away with with uh all kinds of uh you know things that that uh that normally would not be uh uh you know tolerated uh by any regional any regional uh, player and and he said we seem to be tolerating it thus far um you know will we will we put an end to the tolerance right now and and uh and basically show you know project power in in a region that you know historically russia has has uh has enjo- has enjoyed and and wielded power uh so it w- I th- it was an interesting uh it was an interesting interview that he gave that is uh uh that is not you know it's available on youtube uh if you you understand russian uh yeah it's it's quite a, a, a you know quite a revelation but uh yeah back to your question um y- you know the gr- ultimately turkey wants to be uh a, a, a you know a broker in the in the Artsakh conflict they want they want to uh they want to be up, uh able to sit at the negotiating table they want to be there with russia as a mediator um uh, they made it clear that they don't. They and Azerbaijan do not approve of the OSCE Minsk Group process. Uh, the co-chairs, U.S., Russia, and France. They certainly uh, uh, they don't like France's uh, 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 you know uh, France's authority uh, as as a Minsk Group uh, uh, as one of the Minsk Group co-chairs. Um, so. You know, uh, Tur- Turkey has shown that you know directly um, through through its one-sided relationship that it 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 in no way, shape, or form can be a broker uh, to a future uh, resolution of of this conflict. Uh, should should there be a negotiated settlement, um, it it has sh- it has shown its cards, um, and uh, it's forfeited uh, it, its its right to to be a, a, a broker, an honest broker. Um, so, so that's to, to Armenians, that's a non-starter. Uh, and, and I, th- I, I'm pretty confident that the European Union also would see it as a non-starter. And frankly, even the United States, uh, and the Trump administration, they're fed up with, with Turkey's, uh, uh, you know, uh, gamesmanship, uh, and being a bad actor in, in many different fronts, uh, in the greater Middle East. Um, they certainly are fed up and, and that's part and parcel of the reason why Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, was in Europe uh, last week. And one one of the things that he discussed with uh, with Greece's Prime Minister, for, uh, for example, was the potential pullout uh, or partial pullout of uh, U.S. air assets from the Injirlik Air Base in Turkey. Uh, and uh, and so if th- you know if that's on the agenda, uh, then then that's a serious matter. Um, and Erdogan has. Uh, you know, has threatened to to kick the U.S. out of Interlake, uh in the past. Um, uh, that may be bluster in many ways, but uh, but I think I think the U.S. is at a point where, knowing that they have tactical nuclear warheads, or at least we we believe they still do at Interlake, um and knowing the uh, the authoritarian streak that Erdogan has and the expansionist streak, um, that it's time now. That it's time to pull out uh, of Inserlik, um, or to pull out some of the assets at Inserlik. I have a question. So, what's the uh, likelihood of American aid in Armenia, and in what scenario would we be able to achieve that? Y- you know, U.S. U.S. assistance to Armenia uh, since since uh, the democratic transformation in 2018 um, has 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 been on a positive trajectory. Uh, and that's thanks to our our, our friends, uh, uh, both both sides of the aisle in Congress. Uh, uh, Jackie Spear uh, spearheaded a uh, 
um, uh, a, a, uh, the appropriations um, uh, for fiscal year 2020, uh, guaranteeing uh, 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 you know upwards of 60 million dollars in U.S. assistance to Armenia. A lot of that is is for uh, economic development purposes um, and strengthening its democracy uh, and and continuing with reforms in various sectors. Um, so that that's positive. Uh, I mean, when when that vote happened in the House, uh, the overwhelming number of Democrats supported it, and 42 Republicans supported it as well. So that was, you know, in hyperpartisan Washington nowadays, getting 42 Republicans to, you know, to support, uh, an, you know, an amendment to the appropriations bill introduced by a Democrat, that that's pretty impressive, um, considering considering the uh, the hyperpartisanship. But uh, but yeah, that's got we've got to we've got to fight for it. Nothing is nothing's guaranteed. Um, we've got to fight for continued U.S. assistance. Uh, we're we're grateful. Uh, as American citizens, as Americans, Armenian Americans, we're grateful to um, our, our members of the House, Republicans, Democrats, for pushing for it. Um, uh, but everything's everything's a battle. We can't take it for granted. We have to we have to advocate. You know, we have to send letters. We have to to keep educating them in town halls. Uh, uh, here in, the, in, in you know, despite the COVID era, we still have to. You know, it's it's incumbent of us to uh, you know. To build those relationships with with members of the House and Senate. So you would suggest that we continue uh, speaking to our local. Yeah, to, to members. Yeah, members of the House and uh, right. Uh, any opportunity um, e that there is. Uh, certainly, the COVID era. A lot of it's uh, uh, through through uh, uh, virtual uh, meetings. Uh, but you know, the Armenian Assembly. We've got our, our coffee and Congress uh, virtual series, and we'll have more of that very soon. Um, uh, and you know any opportunity you have, uh, uh, and, and and some members of the some members of the House feel comfortable going out in public. Uh, some don't. Um, same same goes with the Senate. Um, but but if you hear about you know uh, your member uh, doing a meet and greet, keeping it socially distanced and what whatnot, um, it's it's going to happen in October. If there's any month it's going to happen, uh, it's it's now because of the October recess and uh, and. You know the overwhelming number of of members of the House uh, running for re-election. So um, you know they're they're going to want to meet at a again y practicing social distancing and all, and all that. But they're they are going to go out into communities and they and they frankly have already in in in, in many parts of the country. They're going out. Um, they're they're meeting with small small groups. Uh, so if you hear about it, uh, dear listeners, dear watchers, if you hear about it. Um, your member being, you know, on a Saturday or Sunday, heading out uh, to the town square, wherever you live, um, you know, take advantage of it. Go introduce yourself. Tell, tell them who you are. Tell them you're a proud Armenian American, that you stand for the, the, the basic human rights of the people of Artsakh who are fighting an existential uh, battle right now. Uh, t tell them that you, you stand strong with, uh, with Armenia's, you know, uh, growing democracy. And, it, and as Prime Minister Pashinyan said, you know, the war that's been unleashed on Armenia is not just a, a war on the people of Armenia and Artsakh, on, on the Armenian nation. This is a war against democracy in many ways. Uh, and it's happening uh, uh, as a result of two authoritarian regimes, uh, one, uh, one being a dynastic dictatorship uh, and, uh, and, 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 and also in conjunction with uh, the recruitment of jihadist mercenaries, uh, which is just, just horrific. Um, uh, and, uh, and it's, and that's been a wake up call actually to, uh, regional powers. Um, the fact that you have, uh, mainly Sunni, uh, Muslim, uh, mercenaries, uh, in the South Caucasus region. Uh, it's certainly a wake up call to Russia and Iran, um, if not other, other, uh, regional players. Let's go a little louder, too. I can hear you, but in case... I can hear you. Um, which presidential candidate do you believe is more likely to support Armenia's cause? And do you have any insight on foreign policy for either candidate that we should be aware of? So, so it's a good question. Uh, for, you know, just from the outset, uh, the Armenian Assembly of America, my organization, we are a, a nationwide nonpartisan nonprofit organization. 
uh, we we do not get involved in uh, in campaigns uh, at any level. Uh, so this is this is very much a campaign question, uh, and uh, and you know uh, the only thing I could say is you know we there's four there's four years of on the record of the Trump administration, it's foreign policy, and the foreign policy is mainly of, of an isolationist nature, um, and uh, and in in many ways, it's an abdication in, uh, of of its you know of our interests and our uh, and our uh, projected uh, uh, power in in the greater Middle East. Uh, we have we have certainly abdicated uh, and and rolled the red carpet uh, to Ankara. Uh, to uh, be the regional policeman, for example, in Syria, to be the you know the aggressor in northern Iraq, for example, uh, we've betrayed our uh, our Kurdish allies who fought with with American soldiers hand in hand uh, to defeat ISIS, um, and that and 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 frankly, ISIS uh, was aided and abetted uh, by the Turkish government by the Erdogan regime. There's ample documented evidence of that, uh, and I and I. Uh, uh, and and uh, and I ask uh, listeners if they're interested. I, uh, David Phillips of Columbia's Human Rights uh, Institute uh, issued uh, two two extensive studies on uh, on the Erdogan regime's uh, aiding and abetting of ISIS's oil trade at the time when when ISIS uh, uh, had uh, control of vast vast sections of Iraq, certainly Mosul. Uh, and also parts of Syria, uh, and also there's a second study which which uh, uh, which delves into uh, Ankara's uh, uh, funneling of of, uh, of of jihadist elements to Syria and Iraq to fight with not just with ISIS but with uh, Al Qaeda uh, offshoots as well. The great thing about these two studies is that that uh, David Phillips has used uh, many Turkish sources. Uh, uh, and, and, and some of them were certainly in opposition uh, newspapers in, in d uh, newspapers that uh, uh, don't exist uh, uh, right now because of their dissenting uh, position. Uh, but that's something to keep in mind uh, that, uh, that, you know, we here, the United States, are in our foreign policy, our isolationist policy, we have abdicated uh, control uh, and, and authority to uh, an expansionist uh, Tur Turkish regime. Um, but that's, that's as far as I'll go. I mean, that's, that is, that is something that's, that's, uh, that's been widely written about by, by many analysts. Um, uh, having said that, a streak of interventionism now, uh, of humanitarian interventionism by the United States, um, uh, would go a long way to save lives in, in Artsakh, uh, and to save lives, frankly, on both sides, uh, of this war, to save, uh, Armenian lives, and also, uh, you know, the lives of, uh, of Azerbaijanis, uh, certainly the lives of Talish and Lezgin and Avars uh, who are fighting, uh, as we have anecdotal evidence on, on the front, li front lines. Um, you know, it would, it would be doing a tremendous service uh, uh, if, if there's greater, greater U.S. Um, involvement and care about what's happening. Uh, and, and in concert, of course, with, with Russia and France uh, through the the framework of the OSC Mintz Group. So um, back to the original question, I will not, uh, you know, I will not get involved in campaign, uh, campaign politics and who's, you know, who's, who, who would be better for Armenia uh, and Artsakh. That's something that, that uh, you can analyze yourself uh, uh, and, and, you know, look at, look at uh, the only thing I could say is look at who the advisors are, the, um, who's advising uh, both candidates on foreign policy, uh, defense policy, uh, with respect to President Trump, you know, uh, he's, he is the decision maker in many ways. So I'm not sure how much advice he, he values from, uh, from his advisors. Um, although he has a very, very decent national security advisor, I must say, in Robert O'Brien, a very good man, good human being. Uh, who's, who's, uh, who saved a lot of uh, lives uh, 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 before he became national security advisor in, in his role as, as, a, uh, uh, as a hostage negotiator for the Trump administration. So, um, but I, yeah, I leave that. Look, look, at, look at who's advising both candidates. To piggyback off that, um, 
Uh, actually, I blanked my question. Never mind. Yeah. Is there? Do we have anything else? We have Until I can hopefully remember. Yeah. We have uh, another question. Um, so, uh, what would you uh, suggest to encourage the Armenian diaspora to peacefully get uh, more world media coverage? Great question. Um, r you know, the media coverage has been, you know, slanted. Um, uh, you know, uh, this 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 false equivalency. Um, you know, Stepan gets getting bombarded, yet you know, uh, a, a, you know, our, the the you know Artsakh Artsakh defense forces targeting the Ganja military base. Uh, you know, a few a few missiles, unfortunately, uh, sadly, you know, hit a residential area in Ganja, and then it you know it makes headlines. You know, which is ridiculous when uh, you know a country, s capital city is is under uh, indiscriminate con incessant bombardment. So. What we need to do is, is uh, you know, uh, on the one hand, you know, uh, you know, God bless the the initiators of the uh, of of the protests uh, this this weekend, for example, uh, here in Los Angeles. Uh, great great work uh, in order to uh, raise awareness of uh, the fact that you know the CNNs of the world are are not providing uh, uh, accurate coverage. Number one uh, and number two, not enough coverage uh, as well. Um, uh, and, and you know, with with a lot of the attention uh, on on the election, certainly, uh, and and lately with President Trump coming down with coronavirus, um, you know, there's a, there's a tendency among among the media, the major media networks here, the media conglomerates, to to focus on you know what's happening in country, and I and we get that, but there's a there's a there's a you know a human a human catastrophe happening right now in, in uh, Armenian Artsakh, and we need to keep reminding them, the major networks, the Foxes of the world, the NPRs of the world, you know, the, the, uh, all, all, all of the major networks, the, the CBSs, ABCs, NBCs, all of them, uh, constant reminder that, that, uh, you know, you could send a crew, you could send a crew to Armenia, uh, to be embedded, uh, you know, uh, either with soldiers or or to cover you know to cover from Stepanagerd or to cover from uh from Shushi or to cover you know from Hadrut they need not have to necessarily be embedded with um with with a a, a, a soldier so uh if you have connections right dear dear viewers dear listeners if you have connections to to media in your in your hometown reach out to them uh uh Tell them if they're not if they're not providing coverage right in the local newspaper, write a letter to the editor. We're happy to help myself, our organization. We're happy to help provide a template uh, for for a, a just a simple letter to the editor. Uh, you know, uh, just uh, affirming that you know you've 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 checked coverage over the past week, and there's been you know other than AP wire reports or Reuters wire reports, there's been you know which are which are often slanted uh, in favor of Azerbaijan and Turkey. Um, there, there isn't much independent coverage, um, uh, but, 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 they, but you do have journalists. I mean, you have the BBC, for example, reporting from the Armenian side. Um, France 24 uh, has has journalists in Armenia. Certainly, Le Monde had journalists uh, until they were they were uh, they were hit by uh, uh, Azeri, uh, the remnants of an Azeri missile and wounded. Um, and that you know, and that and that itself. Uh, is is totally uh, uh, abhorrent that uh, that knowing knowing that there's journalists and and you know their their vehicles um, and and their whereabouts trust me are known uh, to the adversaries um, yet they're still firing uh, you know in areas where where they're trying to report from that is that is abhorrent reporters without borders has has already come out with a a statement condemning the targeting of uh, of reporters who are covering war um and and it's just uh you know it's 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 really really horrific um uh but but you know god bless the war reporters um because they they they're the ones that you know that are the independent ones the independent war reporters god bless them because they're getting uh you know an accurate uh, providing an accurate por portrayal of what's happening on the ground, and God bless Armenia's reporters uh, uh, because they they themselves are, uh, are are doing a great service uh, with with the videography, the uh, the horrific images um, 
that they're sharing because you know those images are important to to share with international human rights organizations um and and also uh in the future uh in in courts of law um uh, certainly uh, uh many international treaties and conventions uh have been violated by us or by john uh and uh supported by Tur turkish uh uh, firepower as well, uh, with the F-16s, for example, um, being used uh, 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 over Azerbaijan's territory. Um, and, and we know of the incident where the Armenian jet was shot, shot down by an F-16. Again, that's something that, uh, that uh, we will have, to, will have to address with the United States government, um, you know, uh, very soon. Um, what, what, you know, the terms of the export the export um, guidelines of F F-16s to Turkey, what those terms actually um, are, and uh, and whether or not Turkey has the legal authority to to use F-16s, uh, U.S. supplied F-16s, um, uh, in the airspace of other countries. So that's that's a question that will have to be discussed uh, pretty soon, but not right now. Not right now. It's it's all about supporting our brothers and sisters on the front lines uh and 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 to your point through through uh pushing the media for for fair and accurate coverage and uh and and not having blinders on on with respect to the uh, uh you know the harm that's being inflicted on armenians on civilian armenians throughout Artsakh. yeah so today for example there was a, a story being circulated around where people were able to swipe up and it would automatically generate a template that would go out to multiple different um, writers for editorials or for places like CBS and LA Times and everything. And they had a template where they would emphasize you know, to pay attention to these things, to write stories uh, correctly and accurately based on what's going on. So you would just to reiterate, you would suggest That's excellent. pushing this kind of, um, I guess, uh, progression towards you know, advocating for what's going on currently. Right, and, 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 make and, and ensure that, that, uh, that Editors and journalists um, and producers uh, on the television and, and radio side uh, uh, do not fall into the, the temptation of of, uh, of false equivocation that you know that Armenia is as responsible for um, you know uh, an errant missile, for example, uh, you know uh, versus versus you know indiscriminate incessant shelling by Azerbaijan of of, of city of Stepanagerd and towns across, uh, you know, up and down uh, uh, the eastern, certainly the eastern uh, uh, region of, of Artsakh. Uh, there's no, there's no equivocation there. There's, I mean, it's, 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 um, it's, it's a deliberate uh, tactic to terrorize an entire population. That's what Azerbaijan's doing. And that, that needs to be emphasized to the editors, uh, to journalists, uh, when, when you're reaching out to them uh, and when you're asking for uh, a better and accurate coverage of what's actually happening on the ground. Yeah, so uh, the, question, per the person who asked the question sent in a link just now. Um, let's get through all the questions. Uh, I haven't read it yet, but it essentially it seems to be kind of like propaganda on the Osbergeon side about what's happening. Um, and his question to it, uh, again, the context would be important, but essentially his question is, um, are we lobbying against skewed news like this? Like, is this something that um, is a big challenge for us? Is this something that we have to kind of fight an uphill battle on? There's all this media that's coming out skewed towards Azerbaijan's side versus the Armenian side. Uh, is this something that we have to, is this a challenge? Have you noticed this in your area of expertise? And have you noticed this in the media that this is something that we have to constantly fight against? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So sorry, man. Yeah. I'm going to repeat the question just in case the YouTube audience doesn't pick yeah. up the question. So sure. basically, the, the the question was, are we doing anything uh, on the lobbying front? Are, is anything being done to ensure accurate uh, depiction and ensuring that there isn't uh, a, sk a skew in one direction, for a skew in direction of Azerbaijan and what they're saying uh, versus what is actually happening? So is there some kind of concerted effort to ensure that is not occurring? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Without without going into specifics, uh, because obviously this is a sure. this is a pub a public uh, uh, access uh, uh, program, 
and uh, and everyone everyone has uh, you know it's open source everyone can view. Uh, but without going specific, yeah, there there is actually uh, um, just gen generally speaking uh, a, a battle going on right now um, to uh, to correct the record uh, with with respect to uh, um, that which has which has been published already the 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 uh, uh, sort of the the both sideism that that's uh, that is often the case uh, this false objectivity. Uh, that the media has, uh, that, uh, uh, and it, and and a lot of it um, is predicated on uh, mainstream media really not caring about, uh, you know, uh, halfway around the world, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, even though it's an existential uh, battle for Armenians, but really, really not not caring too much uh, about what's happening. And part of that, part of the reason for that is is the. Uh, the fact that uh, foreign bureaus, foreign desks, uh, have been decimated over the past uh, couple decades, um, and so you have fewer and fewer uh, uh, reporters at these desks uh, who who could go out uh, into various, you know, trouble spots and 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 cover. Um, you know, oftentimes you ha you have uh, you know you have a reporter that's nearby, uh, perhaps in another country that's nearby that's uh you know that's that's not on the ground that's that's writing the the bulk of the uh the wire story and then they've got you know editors uh in various major countries that are that are sort of doing the 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 editing and uh the both sideism right um that's 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 where it comes from so so you know yes there is there is a, a battle going on right now without going into specifics about sure. what you know what that <coughs> entails but one of the thing, one of the things, one of the points that you could emphasize to your local newspaper is, uh, you know, AP and 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 Reuters, you know, uh, to to not rely, to not rely on wire services. That there's that there's other options out there, um, even if they don't have a, a foreign desk, a foreign bureau. Um, there there are there are people who are covering it. There there are wonderful Armenian journalists who are who are writing for Ar Armenian publications, uh, who's uh, you know whose work um, ought to you know ought to be uh, amplified uh, and picked up uh, in other publications uh, um, because they are on the ground. They're on the ground and they're reporting from a devastated Stepanagir, for example. Yeah. Another question to continue off um, with media. Continue with media. Would uh, would would you have to know if independent journalists would be able to fly into Armenia and embed it with? Report on things, people like Tim Pool, for example. If you know Tim the yeah. oh, is there a continuation to the no, question? No, oh. the so the question was: um, Is there a way to get independent media? Was that was that what it was, Armand? A way um, to get independent would, media out there? Would there be uh, would independent journalists be able to fly in and embed with mil and get with the military to report on things that things that are happening? People like Tim Pool, for example. So would independent media be able to go to Armenia and essentially kind of? intertwine with the military and be able to report what's going on is this a possibility yeah yeah no uh you know a short answer is yes yes and and uh it is being done um okay. so uh and and i'm i'm very very uh uh pleased to hear that the covid the covid uh uh guidelines have, have sort of uh been uh streamlined um and uh uh you know, uh, quick test, quick you know, quick test at the airport. Uh, results, you know, are are are, are being shared with with the uh, the person who you know who who took the test fairly quickly. And uh, as long as uh, um, you know he's he, he or she is not uh, 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 contagious uh, and 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 doesn't have COVID and is not you know doesn't have to be self quarantined, then should it should be okay. Uh, but but uh, you know uh, it's it's always advised to to for example um, check in with uh, either Armenia's foreign ministry or the diaspora ministry. Um, uh, always always best uh, for uh, for foreign media, independent media, um, to uh, to notify certainly uh, government authorities that that they're that they're there on the ground and you know need to somehow get to uh, get to Artsakh, uh, need a driver to take them there and and. Uh, um, 
whether or not they want to be embedded uh, with with uh, battalions, uh, with divisions uh, of soldiers, or um, you know perhaps uh, rep you know report human re human interest stories uh, from Stepanagerd or uh, other parts of of Artsakh. Um, yeah, uh, you know it's it's actually uh, and and we won't get into the funding aspect of it. A lot of independent media, you know, um, may not have the funds necessarily to get there. Um, but, uh, but there, there are, uh, if that's a, if that is a serious problem, um, you know, uh, through Menwa, you could, you could get to me, uh, and we could certainly, we can certainly, uh, talk to independent media, um, about, about getting to our media, uh, if, if the finances are an issue. Fantastic. That's all. Anything all from the YouTube audience or should we just continue? Uh, okay. In case they do, let me know. Um, one th so from a few questions back when we were talking about like the United States and uh, intervening, I've seen personally like through some through comments and um, just sentiment in general, I've seen people that take issue with the United States getting in again not necessarily with this not necessarily with this dispute, but in general the United States getting inter getting uh, themselves involved in the relations of other countries. Um, what do we say? to those people with that with that sentiment and with the skepticism oh here they go prying their nose into something else that doesn't pertain necessarily to america in their eyes how do we um how do we get the message across that w in this instance it's right. it's, it's needed yeah i mean i mean uh certainly there 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 is an I isolationist streak uh among the the population among a a, a significant uh, you know segment of the population it's not it's not a coincidence that that uh, the administration um, um, has this 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 you know isolationist uh, foreign policy tendencies. That's not that's not a coincidence. It's a it's a reflection in many ways of uh, of sentiment on the ground um, and uh, and certainly among among uh, uh, our current president's base. Um, and 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 look, I'm, I, I you know I don't think I don't think there should be any blame. I mean there. Uh, there there are major deficiencies here in our country uh you know um you know uh lack of infrastructure lack you know um improvement of highways and and bridges and just you know uh the electricity grid right uh, uh all all kinds of uh, all kinds of things that need to be improved on the home front uh and certainly uh you know um on, on the social justice matters, you know, that's, that's, a another, you know, area which, uh, which certainly has, 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 uh, uh, pitted, unfortunately it's pitted, you know, um, various factions, uh, against one another instead of, instead of bringing them together to find common ground. Uh, so there's, there's deep, deep, uh, um, societal, uh, you know, uh, societal hurt, here in the United States, that uh, um, that needs to be addressed, uh, irrespective of who the next president is. Um, be that as it may, you know, when it comes when it comes to foreign policy, uh, you know, I'm I'm a believer in humanitarian interventionism, and a lot of that has to do with uh, our own government, the United States government, um, you know, stepping up during the Armenian genocide with with uh, Near East relief. Uh, efforts, um, you know, save, saving the lives of, of thousands of orphans. Um, you know, Near East Relief went went on from 1915 to 1930. Um, you know, in in today's dollars, uh, you know, up it would have it would have been you know uh, upwards of of roughly two billion dollars uh, in in assistance to Armenians and and others. Uh, you know who who uh, were forced to to flee from from their homelands uh, uh, in the Ottoman Empire, so so that that notion of of, of humanitarianism and humanitarian intervention, um, you know, is is paramount. It's sacrosanct uh, here in the United States, uh, and and um, in recent years, you know, there seems to be a uh, a diminution of the importance of of uh, of humanitarian interventionism, and that's and that's too bad, really, uh, because in many ways it's ingrained uh, in the in the hearts and minds of many Americans. Uh, it's almost a knee-jerk reaction when there's a, you know, if, you know, when there's a hurricane or a or a, an earthquake, you know, here in the United States or or even in 
neighboring countries uh, in Central America and elsewhere, you know, there's a groundswell of support um, of, of uh, uh, you know, just natural support among Americans to, to come and, and help, help um, a nation in need, you know, and it, it, the government need not have to, uh, you know, inspire the people. Those people are here in, the, in America, ha they have that. It's part of our ethos in many ways. Uh, to help to help uh, those in need, but it seems it seems as if you know uh, there there is there is in 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 a certain segment of the population, a significant segment, an America first streak, and uh, and how you know how do you you know how how do you reason with with such people you know should should one even reason you know with such people that you know when 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 uh, a nation, right? It is facing existential threats. You know, uh, it's 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 imperative, uh, uh, you know, to to come to their to, to come to their aid, as we've done in many in many cases in history in recent history. Um, but uh, you know, without without delving into religion, certainly, which does play a role uh, in. Uh, uh, among among a certain uh, base here in the United States, um, you know, we could we could we could very well use the religious card, right? We have every right to use it, but but you know, in Artsakh, it's not a religious war. Uh, the, well, the, the war of liberation certainly wasn't a religious war. It was it was a war uh, that um, Azerbaijanis unleashed on Armenians uh, to uh, to rid the Armenians. From their from their homeland is take it was a purely territorial and and ethnic uh, case of ethnic cleansing and, and territorial coveting um, and uh, and even though even though right now it is it is a fact that there are jihadists and I use and uh, and I, I don't use that term loosely that is a fact there are jihadists uh, jihadists on the ground right now Turkey's trying to cre create the uh, parameters of a of a religious war, and that's that's totally wrong, and it should not happen. Um, uh, and and we, I think I, I'm, we should resist that. We should certainly resist that. Um, uh, yes, we are the first Christian nation. Uh, yes, we're we're proud Christians, and we're defending Christianity in that part of the world. But it's it's not. This war is not about religion. This war is about Azerbaijan trying to rid. Rid Artsakh, right mountainous Artsakh, of the Armenian people, just generally, um, and have and 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 have access to, you know, an amazing piece of of territory uh, for the ultimate um, uh, goal of of uniting uh, and creating a, a land bridge, a pan-Turkic land bridge. So that's that's where that's how I see it. It's more about pan-Turkism um, versus uh, versus, or, or, you know, the religious under undertones uh, that Tur that Turkey certainly is trying to uh, to uh, transform uh, this war into. All right. Uh, so one of the main things I think everyone here can agree that Armenians are trying to do. Obviously, we're aware of what's happening, even at a very base level. We know what's right. happening. So big push that I've seen on social media. Um, and uh, just at these protests, the objective is to get this out to the masses. We are a very small minority of people. We're trying to get this to non-Armenians. What can we continue to do? I've seen some, I've, a lot of I think what's being done is the right way. But why, first of all, why should non-Armenians care about this? You know, I've seen comments of non-Armenians that they're indifferent. I've seen comments of um, why are they doing this in ho Hollywood? Why are they doing this in LA? Um, this is a this is an Armenia ma issue. This is an Artsakh issue. This isn't an America issue. How do we get those people to understand why this is important, not just for Armenians but just for people? This is this is a fundamentally a human rights uh, tragedy that's happening. Um, uh, an entire nation is on the brink of uh, of uh, losing their existence, losing their identity on a on a in a region that's been, uh, you know, historically Armenian and, and up to the present day, um, where, where, you know, generations have, have, have built families and, uh, communities and have, and have, you know, produced 
tremendous, tremendous, uh, you know, people we're talking about, you know, are lion like soldiers, um, you know, and, and, and from many generations, um, you know, many, many Artsakhsis, uh, fought in the, in the, in the great war, the great patriotic war, world war two, um, uh, and not just fought, but, but were in leadership positions, uh, were generals, uh, and marshals, um, and, and, uh, you know, Artsakhsis have given given a lot um, of blood. They've shed blood, not just for, uh, you know, for Artsakh's right to exist, um, but also, you know, for other for other uh, empires. Certainly for the Soviet Empire. Um, so, so you know, it's 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 a it's a matter of basic human rights, um, and and that may not interest, you know some Americans certainly um, but it ought to it ought to because uh, if you if you have a friend right who's who's Armenian and you care about that friend right um, if you've been following what what your you know your Armenian friend has been posting on social media for example or, or you know um, you know if, if you're on zoom sessions and with your with your colleague who's Armenian and, and who's who's feeling down because of what's happening uh, in, in Artsakh, you know, if you're a true friend, you know, you care and there's ways, different ways that one can, can demonstrate that care. Uh, and one way is to, uh, um, to talk, you know, to talk to their Armenian friends and, and learn, learn about what's happening, uh, in Artsakh, um, and then take action. And you could take action in many ways, uh, by joining Armenian Americans and writing to elected officials and, and, and advocating for, for example, for the passage of House Resolution 1165, um, you know, they, they could donate to a charity like Armenia Fund. Um, uh, you know, they could, they could um, for example, stop, stop purchasing Turkish uh, products uh, from, from Trader Joe's, for example, um, or, you know, Turkish products from, from any, any chain, any supermarket that is still selling Turkish products. Um, so, so there's, there's, a there's a lot of things that non-Armenians, uh, especially those who have friends who are Armenian can do to show some empathy and uh, to show, to show sympathy rather to Armenians, uh, um, in this time of great need. Um, so, so if you see, if you see Armenians out in the streets, uh, they're not there, uh, you know, f you know, just for the hell of it they're there because there's a there's a sacred cause that they're that, that we're fighting for and and that uh we welcome we welcome the broader uh you know uh, american community to join us in this cause and uh, to to emphasize on that any to this point any non-armenian that has shared their shared the message we've been trying to send any non-armenian that's gone to the protests uh that has done anything at all to it has donated has done anything at all to really just spread the message and the awareness of what's ongoing is greatly appreciated amongst amongst every armenian absolutely uh so something we were talking about before so there's a lot of different um maybe not a lot but there are multiple streams of uh multiple charities right now uh you mentioned the armenian wounded warriors there's armenia fund i've seen a couple others uh, is there by any, is there any chance of there being too many different outlets of charities is or um, would that possibly as in your eyes hinder the effectiveness of the of the money being raised or do you think is it, it would be more effective to compile it all and put it into one put it to Armenia fund or is as is uh, fine just so we can do this as most effectively as possible sure I, look Arme Armenia fund has a proven track record uh, of getting good work done in Artsakh and throughout Armenia, uh, you know, since since uh, 2018, they have a, a, a new uh, leadership as well, uh, 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 with Haigag Arshamian uh, as as the director of, of the Hayastan Ar Armenia Fund, um, uh, and 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 uh, there's there's a there's a new uh, outside auditor that's that's uh, you know auditing Ar uh, Hayastan Al Armenia Fund's books, for example. Uh, and and with greater transparency um, uh, uh, of of those books here certainly here the Armenia Fund uh, uh, in in Los Angeles is doing a tremendous job uh, not just with uh, promoting uh, 
uh, you know, uh, the charity, uh, the charitable aspect of giving, uh, uh, but, but also initiating airlifts, for example, um, last week, uh, an airlift, uh, you know, uh, took place from LAX, um, and, and they will be continuing. Um, so I, you know, I, uh, it's, it's important, um, for, for people to know that, you know, this is a trusted organization. It's, it's safe and secure to donate, uh, via Armini Fund, uh, ArmeniFund.org forward slash donate. Um, and just for our listeners, uh, and, and, and for the sake of, uh, clarity and transparency, the Armenia Fund here in, in the affiliate here in Los Angeles does have an executive board, uh, which consists of roughly nine organizations, uh, uh, four major churches, Armenian uh, churches. Uh, in my organization, the Armenian Assembly, we are on the executive committee as well. So for, for transparency, um, it's important that, uh, that you know, your viewers know that, uh, that you know, my organization is on the board. I'm, I'm the representative on that board. But, but, uh, but even if I was not, um, I would highly recommend Armenia Fund, especially in this case. They have a proven track record. Um, there's, there is going to be a, uh, a telethon in, in November, um, and we'll hear more about that, the annual Thanksgiving Day telethon. Um, uh, so I, I, can't, I, can't, uh, I can't emphasize enough. Uh, and the government of Armenia certainly is, uh, is uh, you know, uh, has approved Armenia Fund as the trusted organization uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to basically donate, donate dollars, donate funds. Um, you know, unless you have amazing medical apparatuses, uh, you know, uh, preferably not used, uh, that you have access to and, and want to donate, um, uh, to Armenia, um, that can be handled also through Armenia fund, uh, th through the airlifts that I mentioned. Um, but the, the easiest and, and best thing to do right now uh, is to, uh, to donate dollars, um, not, you know, not clothes, n nothing like that. Uh, everything is, is accessible in Armenia. Everything can be purchased in Armenia. Um, and uh, uh, even if it can't, it can be sourced in nearby countries and brought to Armenia. Okay, thanks for clarifying. Sure. So now going forward, what, um, obviously it's speculative, but what is, what's the possible future of Artsakh? What can we do? What more can, from the capacity that we can do here, w how do we ensure a, a favorable outcome? We've got to win. There's no, there's no other, there's no other option. We have to, we have to win this. Uh, it's a, it's an all out battle. Um, it's, you know, uh, we have to support our soldiers in any, any way, shape or form we, we can. Um, and, and so, uh, the, the consequences of, of any other outcome, um, are potentially horrific and, and drastic. Um, and, and, uh, you know, for the Armenian nation, right. For, for our homeland, uh, for its security, any other outcome, um, uh, is not, is not in our interests as a nation. Um, so, so we have to, we have to, you know, double, triple our efforts, uh, you know, in defense of Artsakh. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, we just have to be, we have to be attentive, alert, um, you know, attentive on social media, active on social media for those of, for those of you who already are, uh, and, and, uh, and more assertive with, uh, mainstream media. Uh, in terms of better coverage, accurate coverage, and uh, and and uh, the the type of coverage that that uh, that would would align with the with the journalistic ethics, for example, of of most independent and real journalists, um, uh, if they have journalistic ethics and values, then uh, then they won't they won't go ahead and, and just, you know, report what the wire services are reporting. They'll delve deep into a topic and, and, uh, and, you know, have, have a, have a deeper look at what, what the context, what the background is of, of a given, you know, of a given story. Um, so ask for that, ask for more, more in-depth coverage, ask for, ask for a context, um, and not just, not just, you know, the headlines, not just, uh, you know, the, 
you know, the, the just the, 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 the basic references of, of one, you know, of two sidedism. Ask for more. And uh, la- last topic, let's let's touch on the Armenian Assembly of America, the organization sure. you're a part of. Can you can you tell us a little bit more about what the organization does? And um, sure, so we have a better understanding. Yeah, we're a nationwide nonpartisan nonprofit advocacy organization founded in 1972, uh, headquartered in Washington D.C. We have offices in Yerevan, uh, uh, and my colleagues are working around the clock out there uh, with everything that's happening. Um, and uh, and offices in Los Angeles, which I which I manage, um, uh, we you know we're at the forefront of, of advocacy, uh, always have been, continue to be. We're an independent uh, advocacy organization. We're not affiliated with any uh, traditional Armenian political party. We're not affiliated with uh, with any other organization. We're we're very welcoming of, of people uh, who are who who have other affiliations, uh, uh, be it uh, of a of a political clerical. Uh, um, uh, you know, social nature, we're, we're always welcoming. Um, we have, uh, uh, in terms of structure, we have a board of trustees, um, uh, that, uh, is, is very much involved, uh, in the, in, 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 in the work of the assembly and, in, in getting, getting our word out, uh, about, about, you know, our work on Capitol Hill. Um, I'm active in Sacramento, um, with, uh, with our state legislature, um, uh, and, and, you know, we we've we've had over the years we've had an NGO training and resource center, for example, in Armenia. We've had that for roughly a dozen years, um, and that you know those were in the early years of Armenia's independence, and and um, that was a, that was a success uh, in the sense that it it uh, it helped build a civil society uh, of, of various uh, independent NGOs uh, in Armenia, covering all all kinds of um, disciplines and and. Uh, and uh, and fields uh, and in many ways, uh, the leadership of those NGOs um, are in leadership positions right now, be it in government uh, or continuing with with the NGO. Um, so uh, it's it's and and some of them have actually, um, some of them have have also gone into teaching, for example, and have uh, and have you know prepared the next generation. Of leaders uh, and and who are in actually leadership positions right now as well. We're talking. I'm talking about millennials, for example, who are in leadership positions uh, in Armenia. So so we've done we've done a lot of very very good work, um, and then certainly uh, have stepped up uh, stepped up in Armenia uh, since the 1988 earthquake. Um, that 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 was what drew us to Armenia heavily, uh, and since then, um, you know, both in Armenia and in Artsakh. Uh, 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 our our leadership visits visits both countries, uh, meets with the uh, public and private sector, uh, NGO sector, s- various civil society representatives regularly. Um, tries to assess you know where some of the gaps are, um, and and sh- certainly pushes for greater U.S. assistance, financial assistance, uh, economic development assistance to Armenia um, and to Artsakh, uh, especially on the demining. Uh, programs for Artsakh, uh, and uh, I suspect you know, once 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 there is uh, an end to the violence, an end to the carnage, uh, uh, I, I suspect that there will be a lot more work to do. Unfortunately, on the demining end, um, with with new munitions and mines that will have to be cleared. Uh, any other questions that we have? So far, no. no. Okay, uh, Miron. Any any? F- oh yeah, go ahead. If I can. Yeah. Um, so what would you, uh, how would we get the more of our youth to participate more in these kind of organizations? Like yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'll, sorry. Question. I'll repeat yeah. the question one sure. more time. So the question was, how do we get the youth, and frankly, I'll, I'll expand. How do we just get youth specifically, but also to expand in general people involved with organizations like yourselves and with, uh, trying to achieve what you guys are and uh, like my, like ones? In, in our case, for example, we have uh, uh, an L.A. County Regional Committee uh, consisting of young professionals. Um, who who are who are active in the community, who are active with the assembly in terms of advocacy, um, uh, and and I welcome uh, young professionals who are interested in in advocating with the assembly. Uh, to in if they're in LA County, to be part of the LA County Regional Committee. If you're in Orange County, we have an Orange County Regional Committee. If you're in uh, San Bernardino and Riverside counties, we have what's called the Inland Empire Regional Committee, 
Um, so, uh, you know, up in the Bay Area, we have, we have uh, an active presence there with, uh, with our overall state chair, our California state chair. And these, these are all volunteers, uh, mind you. Um, you know, she, she's up there. Uh, she uh, is very active uh, for us in, in, the, in the Bay Area. Um, we have state chairs, volunteer state chairs, in roughly half the states of, of the United States. Um, so, so uh, uh, and when we, when we hold our National Advocacy Conference, which we did uh, back in 2018 and 2019, uh, this year due to COVID, uh, we weren't able to, uh, to hold this conference, but this always happens in Washington, D.C. Uh, and it's a, it's a two-day conference. The first day is devoted to uh, panel discussions on, on hot button issues. Second day is, is a full day on Capitol Hill. It's a really, really fun experience. It's a, it's, it's, it's a tremendous, tremendously uplifting experience. Um, and we've had a lot of young professionals, young people, uh, college age students come, uh, f- you know, join, join at least, at least for one of the days. Um, the Capitol Hill experience is, is really, really breathtaking. Um, you know, meetings uh, with members of the House, with their staff, with members of the Senate and staff, uh, going back and forth, uh, seeing, you know, Groups of Armenians uh, uh, divided regionally. So if you're you, you're you know Southern California, you're the Southern California group, and uh, you just had a meeting, and 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 uh, you're going to your next meeting, and you see the Illinois group, you see the Massachusetts group, uh, and they're coming out of their meeting and going elsewhere. It's really uplifting when when you're on the hill with good numbers. Um, it gets noticed. It gets noticed by not just the staffers, not just the members of the house, but it gets noticed by other advocacy groups that happen to be on the hill that day and uh and they turn around and they see you and they see a badge that you might be wearing or some kind of insignia and you know uh you know where are you guys from who do you represent the armenian assembly of america and that that's that generates a discussion uh, among some of the other uh, advocacy groups trade associations that are there uh also advocating um, for whatever they're doing um but it, it that just the presence there right um is is tremendously important and ideally ideally you know uh this the national advocacy conference you know um we want to attract as many people as possible young and old uh you know uh, we have we have uh, we've been fortunate to have donors who have sponsored uh young people uh, to go to go and travel to dc and 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 stay there for at least one night sometimes two nights um uh, and uh, and be part of the conference, and we're grateful to to all such donors. Uh, we're going to continue doing that. Uh, hopefully, uh, w- with you know, with a, a vaccine for COVID or va- multiple vaccines, uh, you know, that are proven, um, we can get back to a new kind of normal normalcy um, and head and head back to DC um, and and partake in such such uh, advocacy conferences, which are tremendously important, uh, you know, to advance our cause. So that's I, so, you know, uh, we have an internship program that's been going on also since 1977. Since 1977, um, the Armenian Assembly has a summer internship program, eight weeks. You've got to be a college age student, uh, undergrad or a graduate student. Uh, eight weeks in Washington D.C. or eight weeks in Yerevan. Um, we we you know place you um, you know in a in 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 an internship that you know, you desire, whether it's uh, in Congress, whether it's um, uh, an NGO or a nonprofit, whether uh, it's with an Armenian entity uh, in Washington, D.C., including with the Armenian Assembly and our sister organization, the Armenian National Institute, which is dedicated to genocide, Armenian genocide education and, uh, and uh, documentation reaffirmation, um, whether it's with uh, our, our other sister organization, the Armenia Tree Project, uh, which is headquartered in Boston. Um, there are many, many uh, internship opportunities uh, uh, in Washington. Um, and, and I'm, you know, uh, back, back in the day before COVID, I was often out, out in, on the uh, uh, visiting college campuses throughout California, encouraging uh, ASA members, for example, to, uh, to consider uh, a DC or a Yerevan internship through the Armenian Assembly, really uh, uh, a life transforming experience. Uh, get to new, get to meet new friends and and keep friends for the rest of your life. Um, and and uh, I encourage w- w- we're going to be doing this. Certainly uh, now's the time 
the best time to apply for the Armenian Assembly internship for, for next summer uh, is now. It's n between now and uh, the end, basically December, uh, uh, the end of December, the end of the year. Uh, best time to apply. Um, the, the sooner you can get, and, and the applications are all on the Armenian Assembly's website, uh, www.aaainc.org, aaainc.org. You'll see the student section. All you got to do is go to the student section. It's an online fillable application, both for the, uh, the our DC internship program and also for the Yerevan internship program. Very self self-explanatory in terms of in, in terms of what you need to supply um if you require financial assistance uh you'll have to submit the fafsa um uh, we do have limited financial assistance for uh, students in need um uh for both programs and uh again encourage encourage uh you know all all college students uh, uh and again we don't we don't know what it's going to be like next summer um uh whether it, it would be a, a you know, a, an on the ground internship or a virtual internship, but, but whatever, whatever the case is, uh, you know, we, we'd be happy to, to welcome you. Um, and, uh, and I encourage current students, uh, uh, from throughout y the one, the one, the one, uh, major criteria is that you have to be at least a quarter Armenian or part Armenian. At least one of your grandparents, um, has to be Armenian. So, uh, that's, that's the major criteria. Uh, uh, other than that, you know, uh, good grades certainly, uh, has a lot of weight, um, and, uh, volunteer experiences in high school and college, uh, is also given, given good weight. Um, so, um, it's not a, it's not a, <coughs> it's not an automatic that, that, uh, that, that you'll be accepted. Um, it is competitive and, uh, you know, again, we encourage students from, uh, all over the country. Uh, if you're a student in Canada, uh, you know, please consider, consider an internship with the assembly, uh, in DC or in Yerevan. Um, and, uh, yeah, I can't speak. I'm, I'm an, I'm an alum. I'm an alum of the internship program. Um, and, uh, and speak highly of it through my own experience. Oh, it sounds like a fantastic experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything else? No other questions? No other questions. Okay. Um, Miran, any final notes you'd like to like to give out? Any any final resources people can check out? Just any any closing thoughts for you? Well, you know, hashtag Hachteluink and Yevidi Hachtenk Hachtchiga. We we just have to we have to be focused all in for the cause, all in. Um, you know, there's a major P PR media war going on right now. If 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 that's where, if if that's the only thing we could do right now, then let's let's you know, let's try to be influencers, um, irrespective of where you live with your local radio station, with your local, um, uh, newspaper, um, with, with the LA times, for example, um, who, uh, they've done an abysmal job thus far on coverage. Uh, and, and that's gotta be quickly fixed. It's gotta be some solutions with the LA times. Uh, and there's historically, we've had some, some, uh, tension with the LA times, uh, over the Armenian genocide, uh, uh, being, you know, the term genocide being applied by the LA times. Um, it ad it actually led to the firing of a brilliant, uh, journalist and reporter back in the day, Mark Adox, uh, who was unfairly, uh, dismissed because he fought internally, uh, for, uh, the rightful, uh, application of the, of the term genocide, uh, uh, with respect to the Armenian genocide. He fought, he fought his editor, and, uh, and multiple editors, um, uh, to get the designation. Ultimately, um, the LA times did like, you know, follow the New York times, uh, and, and, uh, other papers like the Washington post, the Boston globe in, in using the term genocide, uh, uh, when, when writing about the Armenian genocide. Um, but, but the, 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 gym, the verbal gymnastics, the written gymnastics, uh, of the term still, resonate today and we saw it just the other day uh in in an la times piece where m the word massacres was used uh versus genocide yeah which is it's anywhere if that's done anywhere it's already very disappointing to say the least but especially given it's the la times where you have sure. outside of armenia f the, from the diaspora population number one it's here in la 
it's like you're not really representing where a lot of these people are at um so yeah, yeah. so l- final words by car betke by caring betke hak tank um urish urish jarchiga urish urish uh hak deluing bi yep yep hak do mink yep bidi hak tank all right uh miran again thank you so much uh thank you one more time thank you to everyone in armenia in artsakh the people battling the people gathering aid everyone there that's helping thank you to the people here the any any celebrity anyone that has any kind of platform that has spread the message yes. and also thank you to the people that just are regular just armenians in general that have been spreading it and also very big thank you to anyone that's been non armenian as well that has been participating sending aid thank you to all the volunteers at armenia fund and to your organization to all the or- pe- other people that have been donating their time and their efforts to gather money supplies and all of that and if i missed any other group sorry and thank you all as well and one more time final thank you to me on this was very an honor. informative it's very really been an honor thank you for having thank you having thank you for answering all of these questions um there's a lot a lot that i learned i thought i had a pretty good understanding but the level of detail you went to and the amount of history provided very very helpful thank you so much again yeah my pleasure of course yeah but